You ever just like do a college sport? So you've done the sport for like ever, like 16 years, but then you don't do it for like three years, but then you do it again one time because you met your friend when you visited your girlfriend's hometown. And then when you did it, you bit your lip. And now it, five days later, it still hurts. And it's like a canker sore in multiple spots. No, just me. All right. Anyway, we're back. We've got ourselves a little mini micro update. October 14th, a couple good paragraphs in here, so I figured I might as well cover it because that's probably why you subscribe to this channel to begin with. Little micro update. After lots of balancing, the difference in skill between easy and ultra chaos difficulty is crazy at the moment. I'm liking that you really have to approach the game in a different way to succeed. In a different way to succeed. On the higher difficulties, each destructible on the map matters. Parentheses, grouping up enemies so that they pass by a, an AOE multi-eliminations so for example if it's an exploding damaging rock you can run past it uh train a bunch of enemies you know like you're training zombies in cod zombies mode and then shoot, turn around shoot it it explodes boom eliminates for you focusing on economy is way more important in alter chaos and mistakes are way more lethal it's been very fine fun to find a good sweet spot and i'm still struggling to play in alter chaos which i think is a good thing hard difficulty should be hard and this is, remember, Ultra Chaos, the fourth difficulty. Remember, we got Easy, we got Normal, we've got Nightmare, and then we have Ultra Chaos, completing Island 100 on Nightmare unlocks Ultra Chaos. At least that's the last time Noise talked about it. <laughs> ah, beautiful. What, what is that? Five out of 10? Seven out of 10? Burp? That's pretty good. Second of three paragraphs. Doing long play tests daily until the game feels ready and one change that has gone a long way is that horde islands are no longer just defeat like six easy enemies which felt very lackluster they are actual hordes now more spawn in the faster that you eliminate them which gives you an opportunity to actually earn more crystals by playing better so it scales to your own abilities and your own speed this simple change has made the early game 100 times more fun and has relieved a lot of fatigue that was setting in during the late game as your build would get so powerful that you'd insta wipe horde islands in one shot it felt bad to be earning crystals for nine islands before you could actually get to spend them on a shop island. But now he's saying that you will have a mini item shop every island next to your reward chest. So you'll be able to buy little things. It's not going to be the same breadth and depth of a traditional shop island, of course, but you'll be able to get small upgrades along the way. He said he was worried that this would slow down the pace of each island, but it actually brings things uh, all together. Now you can strategize with reward chests, totems, destructibles, and the shop to actually min-max your economy keeping us uh, well informed about half a month after the final official dev update being dev update 20. Please check out my full coverage where we really break down all the main points of that dev update. Searching through here, there was more discussion based on this in the Discord. People asking small questions and noise was also giving some more information. So someone asked like, oh, I thought Horde Islands were normal, like gameplay trailer stuff. And he's like, yeah, this is what they were, but it just wasn't very engaging. So now the Horde Islands are uh, legitimate. You can get up to like 50 enemies on a screen at, at some times if you're really blasting your way through. And he likes that a lot better. And I agree. So do Hordes work on a timer? Yes, they do. You know, it, it should get harder as you go. That's how these types of games work. How many islands are time-based? He said roughly half the islands. So per biome, you got about half of them that are time-based. Someone said, I like this specifically because it allows us to experiment with builds before committing to them, right? You're not stuck with a, a purchase from a shop for nine plus islands until the next shop. You can buy something and then immediately turn around and sell it after one more island. So it definitely opens up a little bit more variety. Someone said, have all of these improvements been done since the update drop? Yes, along with the new visuals, which is the bulk of the work, but it's of course important to balance as I go and get final unfun parts of the game improved. You know, obviously he's still focusing on improving the assets and all the visual polish that he promised and spoke about at the end of Dev Update 20. Those are the final things to do, but naturally you run into different things that need rebalanced and this is a good example of a handful of things that needed rebalanced and have successfully been rebalanced. So personally, and I know a lot of other people in the Discord feel this way too, it's definitely gonna, definitely gonna hit that end of year deadline for the closed beta. You know, he really held off on giving a specific date last time he gave a date was uh the august 20th 2020 date that's good progress for 14 15 days i think we're going to see it probably in november to be honest feeling good hopefully you got some info from this little mini update if you want to see all these combos link in the description for the official crab champions discord join the conversation it also helps you get a little bit of a better chance at being picked for that closed beta also like the video 
you made it this far clearly you enjoyed it and click that sub button i'm going to be pumping out more videos uh weekly until the game is in my hands and then hopefully we can up that to a lot higher so that's all i got bye thumbs up hell yeah see ya <laughs>